Hi, everyone. My area is open government data, so we'll take a slightly different, different approach. I'm going to give you four emerging issues in New Zealand in this space, and then celebrate some open source and some open data successes here in, in New Zealand. Right. We need champions in our open government data program, in fact, all of our open uh, cross-system government programs. So on the, on the data supply side, we have champions at executive level in each government department and an increasing number of Crown Research Institutes and local government across the wider public sector. And they've got a critical role. They have to translate. They have to explain to their um, peers in their executive teams and then lead in their agencies in translating this, these words, open source, open data that we've been talking to today. So that um, data release can become a business as usual activity in their organisations. So they've got to explain why we do it and, and why, do we, why do we release open government data? Um, for economic benefit, for social growth, to illustrate and um, um, transparency and, and democracy and allow people to engage in, in government activities and of course to be more efficient. So they've got to use those words, not the words that we policy wonks tend to use within government ourselves. So we're uh, translating with those tr um, champions. So they're really, really special people and they also have a role with the users um, of the data. So we need champions on the outside of government, people telling us what data that they want. And we're not doing very well at that. We're, we're pretty ad hoc, so we're really wanting you to help us improve our act um, in understanding what you, the users, are wanting government to focus on. So that's champions. And the next emerging or continuing issue is collaboration. So open data, sharing, reuse are currently top of mind across government. There's heaps of information-related programs on the books um, at the moment. At the launch last night, uh, someone was saying there's 12 programs going on at the moment. Well, I think that there may be, a, there may be more than that. And they're generally distributed across different departments to share the leadership and the uptake and the financing of those programs. So everyone leading them must work together constantly. They must share their drive, their enthusiasm, their smart thinking. Their motivations and um, environments might be different. So the more they collaborate, the more they understand whether those differences are actually important. And critically, they too must collaborate with you, the users who want to use the open data. We all have to do better. We all have to collaborate more. And that should go some way towards developing common language and definitions and achieving common results. So that's the next emerging issue. Now, we've got to prioritise policy development. And as I understand it, there's no official government-wide position on governmental open source licensing of software it owns. I understand there's been no strong demand for this policy work. So again, I welcome feedback from you on whether that is the case. The, the most current um, policy at the moment is the New Zealand Government Open Access and Licensing Framework, which recommends the use of Creative Commons licences when copyright works and other material are re released for legal reuse. And the NZ goal applies to data sets, but not to software. So if an agency owns and may wish to release open source software, it recommends that open source software licenses be used. And there are departments doing that, like National Library, Internal Affairs, and then Revenue and Land Information New Zealand. And looking at common definitions, we welcome the discussions that have been held on the um, OpenNZ list about open formats. And we're working collaboratively with them and OpenNZ on updating our guidance on open formats. Apparently we got it a bit wrong, and we have to do better, and we need to have results which receive less criticism. So we, we need to be commonly understanding what policy is needed and then working together to get it right. Now in terms of getting things right, we do have our open our data and information management principles which were developed with the users, with, particularly with um, uh, NZ Open um, in Data Ninjas. 
So we heard this morning that the default for government is closed. That is not the case. The default for government is open. Let's see the first tick up there. Government data and information is open unless it must be protected, in which case, look at the second tick, it then must be protected, and that covers privacy, uh, personal information, restricted confidential information. But other than that extremely extreme necessity, government information is open. So if you want to look at those uh, principles, go on to, data on, on to ict.gov.nz. Now, the, the last emerging issue is having a common course of action, so enabling us all to prioritise the open data and open government work across, across the system. So our open data program, which I um, advocate is a key element of all of this work, it's key for the Data Futures Forum work, it's key for the Open Government Partnership, it's key for the ICT Strategy and Action Plan, and other work across the public sector. So we, the programme, are pulled in many directions. The Open Government Partnership needs us to engage more effectively with civil society. The Data Future Forum wants us to expand our programme to cover private sector open information. The ICT Strategy and Action Plan wants data and information to be managed as a strategic asset to enable better investment decisions. And the Global Open Data Barometer, which assesses um, open data programs across the world, they want greater evidence of our work with entrepreneurs and civil society and much better release of data about publicly funded contracts. So prioritising and using our small resources well is a constant balancing act for us and we need help in, in, in deciding what our common course of action is. And just picking up on the data sets, we do, we do very well. We've been rated third out of 86 countries. I think we were just one point behind the second, which was the US. So it's all those green data sets are where we're doing well. But we, as I said, we're not good at re releasing our data about publicly funded national contracts. That's the red one. And the orange ones, we could do better with elections, environmental reporting, health and schools performance, public transport timetables. So should we prioritise this work over the other cross-government programmes I've mentioned? It's a, it's a balancing act for us. So let's celebrate success. And just before I talk about data.gov.nz, there are lots of government examples on GitHub. For example, Land Information New Zealand, who generously host our programme, and thank you, Linz, for having us there. They, I believe, Linz were the first government agency to release um, open source software on GitHub. And they're the first public service tenant of the Catalyst Cloud, which is the only fully automated cloud solution available in New Zealand, and that's being used for Crown property disposals. Now, I'm terribly proud that data.gov.nz, which is, is a D Department of Internal Affairs website, and which publicises New Zealand open government data made available for legal reuse, it uses open source software in the form of the common web platform offered by Silverstripe. Well done, everybody. There's 31 agencies using the common web platform, and which covers about 70 websites. And there's other open source um, CMSs that have been used, such as Drupal, and I understand both groups are collaborating, working together. So just a, a, a praise for data.gov.nz. They've just updated it. Have a, have a good look at it. You'll see 2,980, I think it is, data sets up there now. And around um, other, other softwares, the Mahara is used by about 3,000 New Zealand schools. It's the e-portfolio for students to showcase and share their work provided by the Ministry of Education. And the supple jack metadata harvester is a fantastic tool that has been developed by Digital New Zealand. They use it to manage harvesting for more than 200 data sources on a 24-7 basis, and it supports more than 10 million external API queries a month. And that, those are from Digital New Zealand. Well done, Digital NZ. And just looking quickly at reuse, here's an example 
of Valleyrad using open government data and open source tools such as PostGIS and QGIS. It's Thunder Maps and alerts service using location data. And at the front there, you'll see that my colleagues had, a, had an alert sent to him about a, a problem on his route that he takes when he goes home. So they've, they use, they've put their data on GitHub and they enable crowdsourcing, a conduit for open government data through fire service incidents, road hazards, earthquakes, rainfall, consents, and they're also moving into this private sector open data space that we've been encouraged to work in as well. So um, alerting for sale, for rent, and flatmates wanted on, on, on um, trade me. So that's just a flavor of open source excellence. And just moving quickly to our open data case studies. We prepare just, we've just, we've done 26, which we think is pretty good, but it's just a drop in the bucket in terms of understanding the impact of open data release. As I said before, there are high level benefits for the economy, society, transparency, efficiencies. And we prepare these, put these up on ict.gov.nz, and they are the reason for our work. They, if, if people are not using this, this data, well, we have to query whether, in fact, the, the program to release it has, has been, has been worth, the, worth the effort. And I'm absolutely certain it has, but we need to know from you how you are reusing that data. So please come back, talk to me, talk to other government, government people here about how we can better know what you're doing with the data. So open data, open source are contributing to a more open society in New Zealand. And those emerging issues of championing, collaborating, using common languages, having a common purpose, they all have equal status in my view. They must all be addressed. And let's all commit to these as our contribution to achieving a more open society in New Zealand. And I'll just finish with a little brag, I think I should call it. We, we were rated fourth equal out of 86 countries for our open data program. And we had been fourth in the first, the first analysis also. So we're doing pretty well, but we can all do better as I've just indicated. Thank you. <laughs>